Hey, it's the Riot. This is the podcast, and we are to quote Michael on the penultimate day. We are almost done. We have this podcast, and then tomorrow's podcast, and then we return back to normal on Monday. Uh, thank you for supporting our fundraiser. So many podcast listeners getting in, and we see those. So if you have a chance to donate to help Radio U, that helps the Riot, and that helps the Worst of Riot podcast. So if you go to RadioU.com, uh, please do that before we finish our fundraiser tomorrow. So stuff that you're going to hear today in the worst of parts of the podcast, the 50th anniversary of no cigarette commercials. Mm-hmm. I kind of remember that. Uh, Riot finds the best list of paper towels. Seems to me that that was a contentious discussion. Probably. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Dinosaur bones on the moon. <laughs> I hope we find those. And uh, Nikki raises her hands and Obadiah doesn't notice. That's it. That's you, it through that. Do you remember what that's about? I heard a little bit. So, yes, I do okay. remember. All right. Uh, other things in the show today. We talk about the shortages that restaurants are having. Uh, multicolored Max and that boat that blocked the Suez <laughs> Canal. And how long will the boat be there? Yeah. You might be surprised to hear. A million years from now. <laughs> So uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed today's podcast. Thanks for I, listening. Did, we, did you mention Throwback Thursday? Uh, I don't no, know if I did or not. It depends on when you get in on this podcast, but check out RadioU.com to see if you can be in for Mega Massive Throwback Thursday. We've got special stuff that we're offering. So if you go to RadioU.com and it's still available, that you'll find there. 877 radio You call it or really just go to RadioU.com. Click on Donate and enjoy. Bye. Bye. The riot isn't all bad, but this is the worst of the riot. Radio U. Right now on the cutting edge of the Woo! things, the topics that people <laughs> care about. The controversy. Zach Not is, really, but. <laughs> Zach is texting us about paper towels and it's weird. All right. You know, I, I appreciate, though, that at least as a show that we can talk about anything, right? Just yeah. anything that you have problem wise, you just. Text us. It doesn't mean we can help you, but we can at least talk you through it with so, it with well, you. <laughs> it, Zach was complaining about the paper towels he purchased, and uh, I don't even think about it. I just like whatever. Just like here, just give me a paper. Meaning towel. you you don't even notice if you don't end up liking what you've chosen. I'm just like, where's the yellow tag that says that if I buy three, I get one free or whatever? <laughs> like that's <laughs> that common. <laughs> that's how far I'm getting on paper well, towels. He was just saying that wherever he was going, was still not having it, and the backup uh, paper towels that normally are still left on the uh, aisleways, those are not probably the best. Well, Nikki, here is, according to goodhousekeeping.com, the six best paper towels available on the market right now. But is this from... If uh, you can get them. Is this when they... Did they do this article like last year? Is this still more current? They say... Real talk. It's their six best paper towels of 2020. Oh, it's a new, <laughs> it's a new it's year's still, list. It still works. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, number one. Actually, no, we got to go backwards. You can't start at number one. Oh, you're going to go to the bottom? Number six, the most green paper towels. Seventh generation, 100% recycled paper towels. Yeah, those are not nice. I I recall those. Yeah, they're probably terrible. And you're going to pay for a pack of them. It's $33. Well, you're paying a premium because it seems like they're uh, better for the environment, but they're also really rough. So, Nikki, at number five, the best no-shed Woo! paper towels, the Kirkland Premium Paper Towel. There it is. So, they say that it was best at leaving behind no lint while also absorbing liquid very quickly. And absorbing your money because you had to pay a lot for them. What are we What are we doing? <laughs> don't, don't think about it. Don't <laughs> think we, about it. What are we doing? You're okay. second-guessing. You wanted right. to help. Okay. All right. Here we go. Number four, the Viva Signature Cloth <laughs> Choose a Sheet Paper Towel. All right. Oh. Those are $50. There's a pack. No, they're no not. Wonder. They're yeah. not fifty dollars. A pack must be like a pallet. There's no way that's fifty dollars. So no, it. I'll it's send not. It. It, I'm gonna look then. A pack of six rolls, forty eight dollars. Maybe that was when. Well, okay, six rolls, but maybe that was when uh, quarantine paper towels and toilet paper were at a premium price. Okay, now we've got Brawny's Terra Square, mm-hmm. uh, which it says that they're better for conservation. That's number three. Number two, the best value is the Flexa size paper towel from Presto. Okay. All right. Now, Nikki, you can get those. This is a six pack on Amazon for, I don't have the price. Um, so apparently they're not available. And then the number one best overall paper towel. <laughs> Drum roll, please. Drum roll. <laughs> According to goodhousekeeping.com, the best paper towel of 2020. Are you Last ready? year. So, I mean, okay. it still works for now. Bounty. 
Bounty. Oh, mm-hmm. the they commercials say, and stuff work. They say it's the number one choice for their homes. For our generation. That's what <laughs> Is that it? <laughs> Because, you know, for a lot of me and my friends, we try not to even use a paper towel. So you're just trying to not have to buy anything else. Jerome says there's a preference for brawny, not due to the quality of towels, but the manliness displayed in the wrapping. Oh, so the guy. Yeah. The, is he a lumber lumberjack guy? Yeah. The paper towel guy? Well, you know, paper towels are helping keeping lumberjacks at work because they're made of trees and... Well, don't think of it that way. Uh, So, Zach, there you go. That was some for the list. Obi, thank you for bringing the list. Um, You're welcome. You know, we have everybody has questions about different things. So we're happy to help. What's worse than the worst of the riot? The worst of the riot podcast. Yeah. You did this to yourself. Podcast. Riot. Radio U. Well, friend of the show, Nikki, passed me this list. Five things. That are plaguing fast food (laughs) right now. So it's the five things that they're saying uh, you'll really start to notice a shortage from either this month or just in the next coming months. All right. So number one on this list, chicken wings. Uh, uh, We've heard rumblings about that. See, this one's new to me. Nope, this one's new (gasps) to me. And I think that's because I buy the party wings at Costco. And sometimes there's not as many or it's a new company and they're bringing them in and out. So that one's been talked about for a while. Okay. Second item that is a a shortage in fast food, ketchup packets, Mm -hmm. which I didn't know that was a thing, but I saw people joking about it online yesterday. We talked, I think it was Hudson and I, when you were off one day, um, it's basically because so many people now just do curbside and just pick up and drive through. Sure. So they put the ketchup already in the bags. Yeah. Even if you don't ask for it, it's just already kind of built in there. And that's way more ketchup than they would ever give away in the past. Because normally you would just ask for it or you'd go get it yourself. Right. Right. Okay. Number three. This one I read yesterday. Bubble tea. <laughs> boba. It's the boba stuff that's in the bubble tea. It's the pearls. It's the balls. They. It's the tapioca, like starch and stuff, and the bubbles. Like they're there's just a shortage of them. So it comes down to it, like so many other things. It's not that they don't exist. It's that we're having trouble at the ports. Yeah. Getting the stuff to the restaurants as they're coming because a lot of the boba balls are imported, mm-hmm. which I didn't know. Uh, number four. Oat Which just milk. means it's going to be more expensive. So. Yay! Yay! Which shortage just means that. <laughs> oat milk? So you can blame Starbucks for that. They came out with these uh, oat milk drinks and stuff, and they're so popular, they were, that now they had to take oat milk off their menu because most locations are out for the next few weeks and they just can't get it in. Sure. Finally... The thing that they say is plaguing fast food in this time of shortages, a shortage of staff. That's the biggest thing right now. They just can't find people to work. Okay, here's the thing that gets me, though, is do you remember, okay, obviously more than a year ago, two years ago or whatever, they were putting in these kiosks where you could order yourself and they were like, this is going to devastate fast food. People won't be able to get jobs, like all this stuff. And now they're like, I wish we had those robots because people won't work. No, it's it's not fast food necessarily. It's more just restaurants. So like in general. Not the super nice stuff and not the fast food drive through. It's just the everyday restaurants. Can't find people to work. I think I told you on air a couple days ago, I tried to go to Red Robin and they were like, no. You can't. You're bringing too many people. And we're like, we'll sit separately. No, you don't understand. We can't serve more than 15 people at this restaurant at any given time. Because there was only one waitress. They they were like, do you know anybody that wants to work? work? You can come in if you want to work. Like, like, they're going to hire everybody. Like, wait a minute. Did (laughs) I call the wrong number again? Well, and it's frustrating, too, because they say that people go through the hiring process. Like, they go through the, uh, what is it, the interview? They'll do that. And then they don't do anything past then because... Perhaps, uh, how do we say, the unemployment and stuff? You have to show that you're trying to get a job, but they don't actually take the job then. Man, that is legit a Seinfeld but, episode. Oh, I know, totally. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel bad. A lot of places, they're just, no one wants to go work. Vandalay Industries. And you want to be my latex salesman. (laughs) So that's the shortage right now. And I guess the number one thing is just a shortage of people working. Well, you know what? Uh, I better hurry up and get as much fast food as I can now. I think if you're willing to work and you want it to get, man, they would take you right then and there. They are so needing help. In case you're wondering, yes, we do get complaints. They have gone too far. This time, they are going to be held accountable. 
listening to The Riot on Radio U. <laughs> Nikki just gave the most artful, dancer-like stretch I've ever seen for it. It was a slow build. Yeah, I just stretched it. Their palms it. out. <laughs> I just, it wasn't what I expected to uh, see. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. That's a stretch. Now here, yeah, okay. That's more like what I do. Like a King Kong stretch. Yes. Stand up and scream and push my arms as hard as I can. Uh Nikki and I have, we the studio's different now. There's some new furniture in here and whatever. And we finally reestablished the plexiglass between the two of us. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, I've been a disease carrier for a long time. And, and I don't want to. Yeah. So I'm over here. So uh, the... Uh, the plexiglass? What, the plexiglass, what Nikki doesn't, can't see and no one can see really is that Radio U TV is on a TV behind my head. And now it looks like it's on a TV, like just slightly above Nikki's head. It's just the reflection. It constantly looks like Nikki is waving her arms at me. And it's not me. And I'll be in the middle of like reading traffic or doing whatever. (laughs) And I see what I think is Nikki like, oh, no, no. Are you getting worried? And so I've become really, one of two things is going to happen. I'm going to be so tuned into your arm movement that I am arrested that I just can't or, work. Or <laughs> we need to switch the TVs behind you. Or there's going to be a fire on your side of the desk and you're going to be trying to get my attention and I'm going to be over here like, just ignore her. It's just a music video playing behind me. <laughs> that fire is just on the TV and it's reflecting in the plexiglass. Well, do Don't think, worry about can it. Can we tilt the TV a different way or something? Because, I mean, we need to. I need to watch the TVs because how if someone's breaking in, how can I see? Yeah. I need that. But if they're breaking in and you're trying to get my attention, oh my gosh, they're breaking in. (laughs) I'm over here going, just ignore her. Just she'll she'll stop. Just stay on point. Well, okay. So this is a, it's a, it's a fixable problem. We just need to come. It's fine. Keep going. I don't know what we need this plexiglass for. I, you know what? We'll just let's not worry Chris with it yet because Chris has been so He's busy. Got a lot going on. With the rest of the studio that let's just uh, keep working with how this is. Okay. And I promise to be more vocal if something's happening. Okay. I like that. So that like way that. it's not like just arm movements. Okay. Good. I'd be like, <laughs> someone's breaking in. <laughs> There's a man at the door. <laughs> you Does he have donuts? It. You go get it. <laughs> Which is exactly how that goes when someone comes to the door. One uh, of us is expendable. The <laughs> other one runs the board. The worst podcast with the best listeners. This is the worst of the riot podcast. So, Nikki, I've been thinking a lot about these new Macs yeah. that they're releasing. There's the new iMacs, and they're coming possibly in up to six different colors. Yeah. Uh, plus, I mean, you can get the silver one, so I suppose it's seven, but it's six new colors. There's like yellow and orange and blue and maybe even purple. Like, I don't know. But I, I've been looking at these, and I got to tell you what, I don't want a colored Mac. And for me, it really does come down to resale value oh you think it'll be harder to resell one a mac is so expensive it's like buying a car yeah and so when you buy a car the financing seems the same i know (laughs) it's like i gotta go in and it's like what's it gonna take to get you and an imac today it's harder because then you're you're gonna have to find someone who wants your particular specs like on your mac if you're selling it and doesn't mind the color that you wanted yeah so that's. But I would want one of them. It's just you understand it is harder oh, to no, resell I, it. I just know out the gate if I was going to invest in an iMac, I would not get one that the, was colored. Look at the green one or the purple one. And Apple should be telling you, well, why are you selling it? You should just keep it forever. I think mean, that's Do, what they want. Well, I <laughs> tweeted this yesterday, and I had several people that are like, "Why are you thinking about reselling it already?" Blah blah blah. And I'm like, "Listen, as far as I'm concerned, my technology is in the middle." of the churn i don't keep anything whatever i buy i keep it for a while i sell it i buy the next thing well, it's what walk. keeps the tech economy going you're, you're supposed to sell it before it gets too old that's exactly and right and then you won't get as much out of it so it really is it's a process but boy they're pretty looking i i stay on top of that 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 being said the new imax 
are less useful than ever. But they're so pretty again. They, they Come really on, are. let's be shallow. Let's they just really look at are. that. They are, but like <laughs> when you when you look at it, it's like they're not as loud as they used to be. Like the volume, if you want to listen to yeah. it. Uh, they've also taken out like a lot of the connectors. You mean so they're lighter? Are they skinnier? They are. <laughs> they are. But it's just weird how much they won't do. Yeah. And Mac does that. Like even this MacBook Air I have, which I'm I'm a fan of for the most part. There's this other part in that's like, hey, look, n- I can't plug anything into it. Well, that's, that's great. You, I mean, you. That's on you. <laughs> it's always they why change you, things. Why, like, why do you, you need should to? have bought a bigger hard drive from us. <laughs> yes, it's your own fault. It's all, that's you, dummy. <laughs> so they are. They are pretty though. There's green, yellow, orange, pink, purple, blue, and silver. Well, uh, I like. I'm and telling you, there'll be a you, billion dollars. So. I'll call it the car conundrum. I can't buy a Mac in an off color because eventually, when I go to resell it, people will be like. <laughs> I, you know what? I, I like what you have here, and I like your. We're gonna have to knock, you know, a thousand dollars off the price because <laughs> it's orange. Uh, so those start uh, to order on the thirtieth. So there you go. You gonna get one? Uh, You're not. Eh, they lost well, you. I only use they my laptop. You. I don't use a desktop. I haven't I for a few years, but it is nice looking. <laughs> it's pretty. Pretty. No- <laughs> you know what? I like. Complete side note, but at this point, if I were to go, like if you say to me, hey, would I go buy a laptop? As much as I love the quality that you get with a MacBook Air, I'd buy a Windows 10. Giving every novelty food the publicity it so blatantly desires. It's the riot on Radio U. You know what you've never seen, Nikki? What? Never in your life. Never. Ever. Never have I it's ever never seen. never happened. <laughs> what is it? No one has. Well, maybe somebody, but not us. You've never seen a cigarette ad on TV. Oh, has there never been one? At, oh, you oh, probably can't, no, no, can no. you? There has been. It's just that you and I were not alive for those things. Oh. Check this out. Uh, it has been 50 years. 11.50 p.m. on January 1st, 1971. It was the last TV ad for cigarettes ever. Ever. <laughs> it ran on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. Okay. And it was the last one. Somebody actually, they've got it on YouTube so you can see it. And you can watch what it looks like? Yeah. And so they say. I guess I thought maybe in the 70s, when did like cigarettes become bad? Because if you look at really old stuff, they're just fine. Like they didn't know. <laughs> what, 50s and 60s? At that I moment. Guess. Well, I guess maybe I thought the 70s as well, but it looks like they had caught on by then. Well, if it, 1971. Mm-hmm. So they, the last one, this commercial was uh, apparently they were trying to market cigarettes to women called Virginia Slims. Mm-hmm. And they said the tagline was, You've come a long way, baby. Meaning, like, it was supposed to cash in on the women's lib movement. Sure. So calling them baby was a great choice. Well, back then, though, I think. <laughs> back then, it was it actually worked. I'm sure they were probably like, oh, it's my cigarette. <laughs> we're no, not here. Nothing says I'm free to be myself like having my own cigarettes. <laughs> not here, not now. <laughs> Slim cigarettes. Oh. Because I wouldn't want to be fat. So. <laughs> right? <laughs> Well, I do Am know, I uh, wrong? I know a lot of people that would smoke to uh, control weight, so yes. Shoot. Man, it's cheaper just to eat. And even the health care is cheaper. I mean, but they say fat's the new smoking, but sitting's the new fat. So <laughs> Whichever. <laughs> Whatever it is, go well, it's ahead. it's interesting to see a, a commercial. You're right. We've never seen one before. Yeah. No, 50 years ago. That just blew my mind because I've, you know, we one, we've never seen one. And two, it was like, oh, yeah. They probably did. Just like there was probably, aren't they not allowed to advertise hard liquor on TV as well? It's like they can do beer, but they couldn't advertise like uh, whiskey. Like up to a certain point, yeah. they can. Oh. So, probably. Yeah. You know, you think you live in a lawless society, but there's rules. <laughs> there's up to a certain point, and then you have the rules. <laughs> and then there's some rules. Yeah, 50 years ago, no more smoking. I just remember as a kid always seeing ads for smoking in magazines. Uh, but, you know, they were magazines that I saw at my mom's beauty shop where people were smoking 50 packs an hour. But were they the women's one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, probably. The women's cigarettes. <laughs> I actually know lots about cigarettes where it's like I, every week or every day after school, go to the beauty shop. <laughs> <laughs> we're all just there doing that. Have school, kid. <laughs> 
Did you learn anything today? <laughs> Want to be thin like Virginia? Here, smoke this. Oh, gosh. We've done you a favor by selecting the best of the worst and compiling it all in one place. Riot Podcast Radio U. So you haven't really started to, maybe just the tiniest bit, feel the impact of what happened in the global global supply chain when the Ever Given got stuck in the Suez Canal. So that was the boat that was, you know, stuck the other way and blocked uh-huh. the canal, and then all the other boats were blocked after it, and then everybody was mad. It was a like, huge deal. That's why you can't get furniture. You know, like, it just became this whole thing. That's why your milk is more expensive <laughs> that's, now. That's why we can't have we anything guess. nice. <laughs> it, it really is a thing. Here's what amazes me. So the Ever Given is still in the Suez Canal. Uh, it's just been moved over to the side, mm-hmm. and this is wild. The crew are stuck on board, yeah. meaning that they're not allowed to leave. And they say that it's because uh, Egypt, who where the Suez Canal runs through, yeah. uh, is still like fighting. fighting this and disputing about the costs and all these different things with the owners of the ship, the Ever Given. Now, they say that's not uncommon. So, like, this has happened before where boats are fighting with where it's supposed to go. Uh, but this one's a more high-profile fight that they're going through, and it could last a lot longer than you think. Man, so they're saying... That the crew could be on board that ship for years. Yeah, a couple of years for them to figure it all out. Now, does that mean you're literally stuck on the boat for years or like, hey, Donnie gets the weekend off the boat, you know, like you you just some people. Yeah, like you just get a leave here and someone else stays on the boat for the whole time. I'll just tell you that I probably wouldn't come back. (laughs) They would be like, you can't abandon the boat. Sure yes, you can. you can. Okay, never you mind. Can. See, you the can. thing is, there's a lot of things that you can do <laughs> that people are like, oh, you can't do that. And you totally can. No, it doesn't mean you should. Now, if you did and you were high enough profile, they could arrest you probably. I'm sure so that's I, true. I don't think you could just leave the boat forever. I am sure that's true. I am sure if the captain escaped the boat, there would be trouble. Mm-hmm. But I figure like first uh, poop deck mate Obadiah. <laughs> They won't miss you. (laughs) Nobody. We don't even know he's gone. Saying in the article that there's a person who captains a boat and that boat's been in, uh, you know, negotiations with different countries to try to figure it out. And he's been on the boat for a couple of years. Man. So what? you're there. What? It's not uncommon. No, it's weird. No. That's why. See, but it's not I'm, uncommon. I hope boat captains get paid good money because I'll just tell you right now, if you said to me, Nikki, like, hey, we're negotiating. You're stuck in the studio for three years. The first time you fell asleep, <laughs> it wouldn't be we're stuck in the studio anymore. <laughs> It would be, uh, I'm stuck in the studio because I would be gone. (laughs) You'd be gone, long gone. Well, they don't have any other updates, but in case you're like, yeah, I wonder about the boat that caused all those problems, that boat is still there. It's just moved uh, to where the other ones can get around it. Crazy. (laughs) But it's totally a thing. Where do you go when you need someone to listen to your problems and give you a big hug? Not here, obviously. This is The Riot on Radio U. Nikki and maybe even you have struggled with the idea of us returning to space. Because with so many things that are wrong on this planet, why do we need to go to another one? I just don't want to be stuck up there, so that's a fear. You can probably come <laughs> home. No, I, I mean, that's why there's lots of scary movies set in space. It's the unknown, and you're up there, there's no way to get down, or you have to wait like seven days so you don't just crash. Like, I just don't want that. All right. Okay. I hear you. Mm-hmm. But how about this? <laughs> what will make it better? Well, Nikki, now we have to go to the moon. There's a reason to go. Why? Is it diamonds? It's not cheese. It's diamonds. It's better than that. What's that? Dinosaur bones. Oh, that's also not something I'm terribly interested in. Peter Brannon, (laughs) who wrote a book called The End of the World, which I was just looking at it. uh, It's not new. I thought the book was new, which is why it was showing up in the news. But no, it's like three years old, but he tweeted about it and it kind of blew up on Twitter. Yeah. But here's the idea. 65 million years ago... When the giant asteroid came and ended the dinosaurs, it hit the earth so hard that it blew dinosaurs to the moon. (laughs) How do you come up with this stuff? Wait, like bones? Or like, were they still alive? 
<laughs> well, I don't think they survived the journey. Okay, so like the bo- the bones blew up into the moon. Is that it? So there's bones? <laughs> he thinks that we'll find dinosaur bones on the moon because... Wouldn't they, they just have burned up or something? Maybe not. Like, uh, that's actually a great question. But I mean, there's no atmosphere on the moon, so it would be fine there. The, like, it could hit there. Yeah. Um. But, I mean, would they burn up as they were being forcefully thrown? Like, maybe those, they're on well, fire? Well, I just thought even just from the explosion, I thought they would be burned up from that, too. But... Wow, he really thinks this? Let's be supportive, but also, let's not fall in that hole. No, I want to go now. To the moon? We're going to the moon, bring your shovels. We're looking for dinosaur bones on the moon. And just to be clear, if we don't find any, we probably just haven't dug deep enough yet. Oh, yeah, you just have to keep going. Just keep going! It's not that there's not any there. That's right. You just haven't done this right. That's right. He wrote a whole book on that? No, it's just part of a book where he's talking about... Is he a professor or is he someone... Yeah, no, he's... uh, Is he respected in the field? Well, I mean, you know, I I don't know if he's respected. I just, I just want to know more about the man. Okay, well, look, Peter Brent, like, uh, they sell this book on uh, the Amazon.com. Is it self-published? Uh, it's okay. Is it, is it handwritten? The end of the world, volcanic apocalypses, lethal oceans, and our quest to understand Earth's past mass extinctions oh what a four light a, read four and a half stars 514 ratings oh all right well can you imagine reading that at the beach when you get to like the water part <laughs> i would not want to both the new yorker uh, and the new york times give it an excellent review great no for- not good enough like um i don't want to get into all that I no, can get it, you I just, can get it on te- Kindle for $10 or a hardcover copy for 52 You know, I'm just trying to be happy in our space, <laughs> our current space, not like space space. Yeah. Just trying to be happy, healthy, you know, optimistic, you know, all that <laughs> stuff. And I don't want to add all this to it. It reminds me of that song. We don't play it, but it's a band we play where they're like, they say the world's going to end in 30 days, but I just want to live anyway. Yeah. Like, I don't want to... Find out about the explosion was so great that the bones made it all the way into the moon. That's awesome. The next time we make a movie about that, can we make sure that we see, can I just get a shot of one dinosaur like going, no, (laughs) no, because what about, uh -uh. what about the Jurassic? Perfect. The What was it? The Jurassic World one where, where it's the dinosaur in the dock. He got left on the dock. Like, I cried. Hey guys, I cried. Where are you where going? Are you going? <laughs> There's space on there. Why am I not on the where, boat? Where are you going, guys? I couldn't handle that part. It was so sad. It was so so sad. So I don't want this eye. I want. I want the, the asteroid hit, and we just get a shot of one dinosaur going. Wee! <laughs> you know, All the way up there, not knowing All the, the horror home. that waits for it in space. I want it. Please make it. Please. What if he survived? He's like, where am I at? What the heck? Hey, hey guys. The worst of the riot is over, the but the fun, fun can, can keep going. going. Hey, I saw you checking out my goods. Check the riot blog or stalk us on social media. You want to sample them? A little try before you buy, huh? Through riot.radiou.com. I should thoughtfully evaluate this. <laughs>